All right, so we're here with the great Berrigan, one of the top final expense managers in the country with Gold Memorial. And just wanted to ask you some questions, get some insight, maybe starting off with a little bit about you and your family background in final expense. Yeah, I've been in the business for years. So coming up on my 18th year, maybe my 19th, it gets a little fuzzy towards the beginning. <laughs> I had a unique start to the business. My, my grandfather was in the business. He started, gosh, when he was probably 25 years old, started selling life insurance, a life insurance agent. Okay. My, my dad is an agent. He was in the life insurance business too. My aunts, uncles, so I grew up with life insurance throughout the whole household. So it was a unique experience. It was something that I always wanted to do. It just was like assumed. Reminds me of that movie, the campaign where he was, his dad's a politician. He's like, oh, I'm getting in the family business to be a politician. <laughs> it was like that. I just had always wanted to do it. And my, my dad wanted me to go to school. He wanted me to go to college and get a degree. And it really wasn't for me. So I dropped out of college and I just wanted to get into the business. And I kept asking him and just kept telling me, oh, you're too young. You're not ready. A lot of people don't realize now nowadays, but back then the life insurance and final expense business was an old man's game. We, we would go to the meetings and God, everybody would be 60 years old. <laughs> they were just a, lot of, a bunch of old men. So he kept telling me, how are you going to sit down with a 60 year old man and try to tell him what he needs to do with his money when you haven't even financed a car yet? I actually had a client tell me that when I first started when I was young. <laughs> After he cut my tie off, it was in Arizona. Uh. <laughs> but so I just, it was something that I always wanted to do. And I basically had to like big to, to come and work for the company. And then I started then I was an agent for many years. And then actually I had started before you, I remember right when you first came on, you came from the mortgage business and it's a testament. Like I hear it a lot of times from a lot of people, they're telling me, gosh, I just, I wish I could have gotten to this 10 years ago. But you're a testament for me to that because I felt the same way when I got in the business. And then years after I had been in the business, you came on and you just shot up and you wrote $39,000 your first month. 30, 30, 35, 35, uh, It was 62 <laughs> policies, but I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure it was closer to 39. Yeah. But it, and then we, you ended up becoming my manager and then I ended up becoming one of your managers and growing the organization with you. So it shows that you're, it doesn't matter really when you get into the business that it just it matters on how hard you work and how talented you are on how far you can go. Yeah. And that's what, when your dad brought me in the business, he had told me at the time we're small town, he goes, I don't have any room for you. And this is after, I think after I got licensed, that I got all excited and got <laughs> licensed. And, and I'd asked him, my, my, one of my first questions was be honest with me. Can I make 150 grand my first year? His response was he laughed at me, to be honest. He <laughs> laughed and he's like, yeah, we're going to give you the leads, but you're not going to be willing to work that hard. We're going to give you the training, give you everything you need. But then when I came on, he said, I don't really have any room for you. And I go, what does that mean? And he goes, the area that you're in, it's, he goes, you're working in an area with the best final expense agents in the entire country. He had Natal Natalia. Vincent. Uh, yeah, Lorraine Webb. Yeah, Vincent. Yeah, Richard um, Ozuno. Your, yeah. what, your uncle Jesse. Yeah. The, the Dark my Knight. cousin. They used to call him the Dark Knight. Yeah, Jess Sabayas. So he's like, if you want to make it here, you have to make room for yourself. And so he goes, you've got to be willing to go out and write. And and my ultimate goal was coming from owning my own company is I wanted to get into a management role. I wanted to be able to help other people. I enjoyed training people. But he also said, again, if I can't go out and be successful at a very high level, right? He's like, how are you going to expect to train people that are 20, 30, 40 years older than you and then expect them to follow you? So you have to go out and lead by example. And that was one of my biggest motivations to, to write a lot of business was like, look, I can't ask anybody to do anything that I'm not willing to personally do that I'm not already doing. And I think that's a huge testament to our growth as a team. Yeah. It's a big difference between our agency and our company actually to not just Lincoln Heritage, but Go Memorial. We, when you go to our regional manager meetings and we sit down, there's decades, people have been there for decades. I've had agents that have been working for me for working with me for 15 years. Yeah. So when you have an upline and agents and you go to a company that they've been there for decades. It's a testament to how well the program is built and how well it works. I couldn't tell you how many times I get, I, somebody slips into my DMs, they'll see that I'm a life insurance agent. And I'll get a message from a manager that tells me that they have a better opportunity for me and that they're the fasting, oh, fastest God. growing agency. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you God. know, they'll come in and tell me, and then they've been with their agency or their company for a year. And I'm like, no, you don't really know what, you know, you don't really know what the fastest growing or what the best opportunity is if you've been in the business for a year and you're trying to explain to me i've been doing this for a long time yeah you might be on top of the mountain but you, there's a lot of peaks and valleys in this business and to have longevity it, it requires a lot it requires a lot yeah and like i was saying to you earlier it's not like 
when you're in high school, it's not like Harvard's going to come knocking on your door, or slip into your DMs and be like, hey, come to Harvard. Yeah. Yale, come to Yale. And, but when you're a life insurance agent, you get hit up all the time uh -huh. by all these people. So when you're getting hit up by all these agencies, they're asking you and telling you that they have a better opportunity. It's you're the product. You're the consumer. Nobody, Golden Memorial and Lincoln Heritage didn't come up to me and you and say, hey, please come work for me. I have a better opportunity for you. You, know, you had to go to them. Yeah. We had to go and beg and interview and yeah. try to explain what value we would bring to the company. Yeah. So it's a lot different when company and agencies make money off of selling to the actual clients and the consumers than to agencies that come. Yeah, but a lot of agents don't realize sometimes when they're getting hit up by all these IMOs is that they're the product. They're the <clears> consumer <throat> to the IMOs. It's not so much about selling policies for them. It's about bringing people on board and getting them to sell policies because, you know, that's how they make their money. Yeah. Let's, so let's talk about longevity in the business. It's something that, again, being that you've been around 18 years, you, you know how important it is, the, the ups and downs of the business and <clears throat> having a manager that can support you not only by showing you the right things and training you the right way, but also financially, what does that typically mean? That's a big difference between us and a lot of other agencies. I, like I said, I can't get, I can't tell you how many times I've had someone slip into my DMs and tell me that they want me to come, that they have a better opportunity for me and they've only been in the business for a year. Yeah. You know, when you go to our regional manager meetings, when our managers sit down, I mean, we've all, we've been there for decades. All of us have been over there for 10 years. A lot of our management team, matter of fact, we're not the type of agency that just bring, We'll call you up and say, yeah, if you know anybody that wants to come into the business and you can immediately start recruiting. Yeah. We are, all of our managers have, were agents, are still agents. I still sell policies to this day. Yeah. So you have to have somebody that's in the trenches that understands <clears throat> what it's like to be an agent, obviously. Yeah. You can't just have somebody that came into the business with a marketing background and all they do is recruit. Yeah. They just that, bring that, people on. That's never worked out. We've tried it. No, definitely not. Yeah. yeah we did try it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but no, I mean, it's, it, you need to have a consistently producing upline to be able to invest in your business. If something happens a lot of times, sometimes you have bad days. Sometimes the, the agents can go through a, a dry streak and they need support from their managers, but not just the bonuses and the things that you do to try to incentivize your agents to work. It's literally going out and training them. You can't have a manager that's halfway across the country when they tell you about this great opportunity and they send you a few webinars and things to look at. Good luck. Yeah, you need somebody to come out and actually show you how to conduct business. And then the training with our agents is ongoing. There's agents that have been with me. I have agents that have been with me for over 10 years, 15 years. And then every now and then we still go out. I've had Jesse Escobar, one of my best agents. He's written 2 million AP in lifetime. Yeah. Still, we went out four or five days ago, we went out and worked together. Yeah. It happens all the time. You have to, you have to have a manager that's investing their time, their most important resource, resource, which is time invest in you. And outside of that too, and you were talking about our last regional meeting. I think they said it was average time of the company was like 12 or 13 years. Average income was like 700 grand. So obviously there's a correlation between that. The people that have been here 12 or 13 years, they've been through ups and downs. They've weathered the storms. They've continually moved forward because again, if you're selling insurance, I can almost guarantee most people within their first year or two, especially, you're going to have times when you feel like quitting and giving up, right? There's oh, yeah. Yeah. It can any particular day that yeah. can happen. You go yeah. by four or five doors and then all of a sudden you don't sell anything and everything's over. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. ready to quit. It's not for you. And all it takes is that one day, that one day where you write six, $700 in premium and you make two, $3,000 that just is, okay, this is, this is why I do it. Yeah. I remember calling your dad one time and this was like my... I think it was my second month in the business and again, wrote a ton of business my first month, went out and just fell on my face. I had a week where I didn't sell anything. It was like five days straight and I just blanked and I'm calling your dad. I think I was driving back from like Manteca, which is like an hour and a half from where I live roughly. And I asked him if the leads had changed and yeah. literally he laughed and he was like, no, it's you. Like it's something you're doing. There's something in your presentation. I go, I'm not doing anything different. And I had to make a choice at that given point in time. Do I look in the mirror and do I really analyze or do I place blame? Because again, I've seen a lot of agents over the years, whenever they hit that hard spot, it's a lot easier to say, oh, it's the leads. Oh, it's the area. It's this or that. Yeah. But the reality is if you stick to a proven system and you're doing the same things consistently, it's easy to find out if you start seeing that your numbers are dropping or something's not working out, it's easy. It's easy to go back and say, okay, what did I change? For me, it was, I quit filling out the application in the house. I just had memorized the questions and something as little as that, right? Cause I was trying to, I thought there was a faster way. I was trying to reinvent oh, yeah. the wheels, so to speak, and it backfired.
Yeah, I've talked about this when I was talking to somebody about the business. You always hear these agencies are coming out and they're the fastest growing and they're doing this. And it started years ago with the internet. Oh, we're doing web leads and oh, we're working over the phone. I explain it like this. It's like football, right? Football has been around for a hundred years. So if their new franchise came out and they started a new football team, they're like, oh, we have a new way to play football. But it doesn't go. There's only one way to play football. There's no new, no, there's no new hot thing that's going to come up. That's going to increase your sales. It's the biggest mistake that agents have that they make. The biggest mistake that I've seen in the 20 years that I've been in this business. It's when an agent isn't making enough money and they're not selling enough. They start to look at things like maybe if I had 10% higher commissions or 20%, if I had a higher contract, I'll make more money. <clears throat> yeah. Or maybe if instead of paying $30 for leads, I'm paying $11 for leads, I would make more money. Or sometimes they'll go into a house and they don't sell anything. And they think in their head, you know what? Maybe I could have sold them a Medicare supplement, or maybe I could have done an annuity, or maybe I could have done a rollover, a 401k rollover. So agents get in this big funk where they start to think that they need to do all these things and to add all these things into their business to be successful, but it's not ever that. It's not ever that. It's just the only way to make more money in the business is by increasing your sales. So you yeah. have to be with a company and you have to have a product that you can pretty much sell anywhere. I was with, I was with somebody that was interested in coming in and talking to us about becoming part of the business. And we went out and we were having lunch and he was talking about wanting, he didn't want to just sell final expense. He's like, no, I want to do Medicare. It's an easy thing. It's the same market. You can go into the house and explain it and this and that. And we were in a restaurant and I looked at him and I said, look, let's look at all, all these people over here. There's maybe, maybe 50 people in the restaurant. Yeah. Right? It was busy. Yeah. And I said, how many of these people in here do you think have a 401k that you can roll over? And he's like, look, look, that, that guy probably does. Look, he's wearing eyes. Looks like he's retired. He's with his wife. He has a nice watch on. What about an annuity? Who do you think would need to have a million dollars in coverage? Oh, probably that guy. He has a nice car and this and that. But, and who could you sell final expense life insurance to? Everybody. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 99% yeah. of the market. <laughs> yeah. So what happens when agents add these things onto their book, what happened to me, it happened to me in 2008. I thought the same thing, but it really happens to everybody. I wasn't making enough sales. And I thought if I could just add these products on, like I said, I would have sold Cutco knives if I could have, I would rather, yeah. I would have that in the car too, if I could have sold it. Yeah. So I would want to go into a house and if I couldn't close a final expense deal, I wanted to offer Medicare supplements, or I wanted to ask questions to see if they had a 401k, if I can do a rollover. But when you end up doing that, you're just wasting a bunch of time. So you go into a house, it's all, it takes 30 minutes to sell final expense policy, right? That's it. 30 minutes, you're in and out and you make your money. If you don't sell it, you go on to the next door. What my problem was is I sat there and I was, I would end up spending two or three hours in the house trying to sell this and trying to sell that, pulling everything out of my bag, trying to sell something in that house. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't realize that I just missed out on three hours where I could have been selling final expense. Yeah. And I could have gone to the, and I did go to the next house and I sold a policy. I'm like, damn. I should have done that two hours ago. Yep. And then you go on and sell three policies that day. I'm like, man, yeah. what a waste of time. I was in there trying to offer all these things, trying to dig in and find out what their needs are and all that. Well, that's the biggest advantage for our agents and the way that we work and just working with one product is that what you're going to sell when you go into a house right yeah. away. If you have all these, you're buying protection leads, right? You're like, okay, I have these leads. I'm going to go in. Obviously they just bought a house. So they probably have some money. Maybe I'm going to sell this. Maybe I'm going to sell that. <laughs> maybe they have a 401k. Maybe they need final expense. In a perfect world, I would sell all those products to them. But once, what ends up happening is that you don't know what you're selling. You knock on their door and you sit on their actual kitchen table and you don't know what you're going to sell them. You still haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. The reason why our agents are so successful is because they know what they're selling. Every single door that they knock yep. onto, they know exactly what they're going to sell. It's the same presentation, the same product. And it's been like that for a decade. And it's the consistency in leads as well, right? It's having, in my opinion, it's Lincoln has the best direct mail lead piece out there comes with the pre approach letter. So not only do they, they send the lead piece that says final expense, life insurance, they put a, a they put a pre approach letter, letting the client know, Hey, an agent's going to come out and see you. And so that tightens up every single lead piece and makes it easy. And we all, we know like for field sales, direct mail is king, right? Like TV is yeah. nice and it converts really high, but direct mail, if you're going to be successful in this industry, working, working it face to face, you have to have consistent direct mail. Yeah, it's the most consistent form of marketing that we have is yeah. direct mail. It's the highest converting, the highest shelf life. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? It, if, it, if you yeah. can't get out there for two weeks, those leads aren't dead. If you're working internet leads, 
the statistic is that if you contact, if it's after five minutes, if it's five to 10 minutes, the, the chances of you converting that lead or even qualifying that lead, and this is a Harvard study, it goes down 400%, right? Direct mail, yeah. how many times have you sold a direct mail that's six weeks, eight weeks, six yeah. months old, right? You've got the person's yeah. handwriting right there. Yeah. The whole thing is that Lincoln has a vested interest in you converting their leads. It's different. So when you go to lead vendors, different types of leads, obviously the lead vendors want you to be successful with their leads so they can continue to mm -hmm. sell you leads. But that's how they make their money is by selling you leads, right? So you're the product. Again, yeah. you're the consumer for them. So with Lincoln, it's a little bit different. They have a vested interest in you converting the leads. They make their money off the policy sold. Yeah. A lead vendor is never going to lose money on selling leads, but Lincoln will. They Millions. lose much. <laughs> yeah. And not just Lincoln, but the managers do too. What'd you, what'd you lose last year? I don't know if it would be a loss, but <clears throat> I invested probably maybe, I don't know, $250,000 in leads. So that's it's all a 250,000 quarter million bucks. And, but that's what the reason too, that you've been so successful is you're willing to put that that money back into your agency. It, it, it really, it's all for the benefit of the agent. I, like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years. When we first started, nobody financed leads. It, to be honest with you, there really wasn't too many leads. The pink leads? Yeah, the, the pink uh, leads, the, the uh, social security lead. They used to call them press one leads because anyone that was waiting on hold, contacting the social security office, they'd have to press one if they're interested in life insurance. Yeah. And so then, they would call them press one leads. Is that, was that the same? Cause I remember hearing about, I remember the pink leads and then the, uh, they had a uh, sweepstakes. Was, oh uh, yeah. yeah. The sweepstakes leads as well. And they're ter terrible. I remember your dad saying, yeah, the lead program kind of has evolved really over the last 20 years to be the pinnacle of lead generation right now. And how it is, they spend a lot of money generating these leads and finding the best quality leads that convert the highest, but just the way that we do our lead program already gives an advantage to our agents because normally if like normal, okay, for the last hundred years, how things have worked is agents are brokers. They're appointed to a bunch of different companies and you get your leads yourself or you buy them from vendors. When there was a new way to do leads, the company fell into it. They're like, you know what? We're going to generate it ourselves. No, we can do it better. We know that we have more interest in our agents closing deals than the lead vendors do. And then they decided to finance it. So the way that we work our leads is, okay, so as an agent, let's say that you make an extra $500, right? You're gonna invest that $500 in buying more leads and make more sales. The way that we do our leads, the managers collateralize the leads. I can order, I can order $200,000 worth of leads in a single month. And then I put it on a big old list and my agents can call in and pick leads at their whim. It's better than an agent having to come out of pocket for their own leads and be at the whim of the lead vendor sending it in and then taking all the risk. So with us, the manager takes the risk, we're, we're, and which is fine because I've been doing this 20 years. Yeah. I've got millions of dollars in renewals coming in. Uh, I make plenty of money. I can take the loss. Yeah. So it's easier for my agents to be able to call in and just pick off the list. They don't have to worry about picking a specific area, waiting for five weeks for it to come in. I order every week. And that's the thing too, is you're talking three to five weeks to get those leads. So you're ordering three to five weeks every week before you yeah, get your first lead. Thousand dollars, yeah, you can spend $5,000 ordering leads before you even get one in to make a sale. And then what happens, let's say you're six, seven months in and with a lot of carriers, you get, you have a couple deaths, you have a couple lapses. Now if, uh, with anyone else, the majority of companies don't finance leads, but a lot of the ones that do, they're gonna make you repay 100% of your charge back. So you, that means you might work a week or two I've had guys work a month and not get paid a single dime because I had to repay it. Yeah, that's a whole, these are normal problems that have been going on for many years, but Lincoln's just been around so long and our agency and Gold Memorial has been around so long that we understand what the agent needs. That's the whole reason why we finance the leads. You can go out for a week and not, maybe not a week, but you can have a bad few days and not make mm -hmm. any money. And the last thing we want is one of our agents to not have money to buy leads. So we finance them yeah. and they take a little bit out of your commissions. And no matter what, every time you sell a policy, you're going to get a deposit. Even if you owe yeah. the company $10,000, every single policy you sell, you're going to at least get some money deposited in your bank account. That reminds me of two points. The first one, the difference with our program too, that it's number one, it's so easy to sell, right? We have 12 or 13 health questions. Pretty much everybody you write, I always tease people like, if you have a pulse, we can insure you. And again, there's a couple things that can knock you out, but terminal illness, hospitalized or incarcerated in a care facility or HIV or AIDS. Yeah, normal things where yeah. any company doesn't want to take the risk for that. And but outside of that, when we submit a policy, we're getting paid that same night. And I was talking to an agent, I think it was about a week or so ago, and he was talking about, he had 30% of his business that he submitted issue, like, cause he was talking about issue paid. And I was like, what, what's issue paid? Like, I, I know what it is, but he said 30% was not being, he wasn't being paid on. So he read a hundred policies. 
these happen to turn away 30 families. Yeah. Decline. It's a decline. It used to happen a lot throughout the industry. That's why they come up with the issue paid in different terms like that. It's sometimes previously over the last decades in the life insurance business, sometimes you would submit an application to a company and it would get declined. Yeah. So you go to the house, you sell them a policy, you convince them to get it, you get their money. You send it to the company and they're like, oh, we can't insure them. Yeah. So they used to have a decline rate. And actually Lincoln used to be proud of that. Even 50 years ago, they'd be like, oh, we have a, a 2% decline rate. Yeah. But yeah. now it's a really a non-issue for us because every policy that you submit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to issue. Yeah. yeah. So when they talk about issue paid, it's confusing for a lot of our agents because every policy that they turn in gets issued. So it's not, nothing really ever gets declined. And the other thing was, is that this, we, I was talking to the same agent about was persistency. And, and that's things that Lincoln is not the cheapest company out there, but to provide the level of service, to provide the fast claims, a real person to answer the phone, paying those claims within 24 hours of receiving that death certificate and the FCGS, right? Saving 10 million plus a yeah. year for families that, that's money that goes to the families, the beneficiaries, not to the funeral homes. All of those things cost money. But there's a lot of agents that say, oh, because your policy is more expensive. I love that. I'm replacing them. And I know that people do replace policies, but I can sure. tell you for us, we're writing 1500, maybe 1700 policies on, depending on the month. And we've always maintained like anywhere from 84 to 88% retention. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've been close to 90 in my group for, like I said, probably a decade. A lot of agents get caught up on that and they, they think that they need to sell a, the cheapest premium that people are going to stay on the books longer. That's what they call it. Staying on the books when they yeah. continue you, to make their payments. If you, so first off, I'll stop you right there. If you're a salesperson and you're selling on price, you've already lost. You're already, to me, that's a, the worst thing that you can, or one of the worst things that you can do because there's always going to be some, a company that's cheaper. Yeah. Right? You sell value. Yeah. yeah. And like uh, companies come in and they'll, uh, throughout the 20 years, I've seen a hundred products come in and go out of the market. Yeah. A company will come in and if they want to boost their, their, their capital, they'll just, they'll come up with a low price product. They'll let you sell it for a few years and then they yank it yeah. or take so, the renewals or you yeah, know, or anything. Yeah. when they yank or shut, it or shut down. Yeah, yeah. When they yank the product is done. So yeah. it wouldn't matter. They can offer you 20% renewals because they know they don't have to pay it in two years. They're going to yank the product anyway. Yeah. And then they don't, you don't have to offer it, but selling with price, it, it Selling a cheaper product isn't going to help your persistency. People are going to spend a certain amount. Everyone has a budget. So when, if I was going to sell you a policy in your head already that what your budget is and that you're going to spend $50 a month. Yeah. So it doesn't matter whether your premium's cheaper or more expensive, the person's still going to spend $50 a month. Yeah. So it's not going to affect your persistency. Overselling affects your persistency and selling inferior. $100. Yeah. Or $150. Yeah, if somebody's on social security making $1,500 a month and you're not going to sell them a $400 policy. Yeah. It's just, it, they're not going to be able to make the payment. So that it's all on the agent. And also the investment. So having a gold memorial, your dad start a retention department. To me, that innovation and taking that, that extra initiative, I don't even know how many retention agents we have for the company now. We've got two in our office. Yeah, we probably, like, probably have a dozen, maybe more. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And I think how many millions of dollars they save? It, I don't know, probably half a million dollars in AP a month, at least for, I don't, for, I don't know for how long. Yeah. And that's money that the agents aren't, that's chargebacks. That's money that is that our agents are getting the key. It wasn't just that the whole reason why that came about was because we're focused on our agents only having to do one thing and that's sell. Yep. If you're a broker, if you're working on your own independently, it's not uncommon for an agent to have three or four different IMOs. Actually, you can have 20 contracts with three or four different IMOs. That's how the business had normally been throughout, like I said, the last hundred years. But we wanted our agents to be able to just focus on selling. It, it takes time when, when you're writing in high volume, you don't have time to go back and call all your clients that didn't make a payment. And same with a logging on to agent portals. If you're representing 10 different companies, you have to log on. You can't remember which company you wrote this person with or this one. They call in, so you have to get on and you actually have to spend office days, right? Yeah. You have to actually spend a what whole is that? day. What is an office? We have an <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke. We have an office day, but when we have an office day, it's me and the guys getting together and we just hang out and have fun all day. It's not really actually doing office work, but normal agents have an office day. They got to sit down in front of the laptop. They got to go through their lapses. They got to call everyone that didn't make payments and they got to check on their pending apps because some companies take four to six weeks to issue. Some can take a month, some issue the next day. So they have to, there's a lot of back end maintenance. People don't, agents don't realize when you're in this business, especially if you're going at a high volume, if you're writing like our agents, right? 30, 40 policies, 50 policies a month, yeah. you don't have time. You do have the time, but why would you take two days out of your whole week when you could be writing new business to do maintenance money. on your books? Yeah. So that's yeah. what we do. We take care of all the policy service. If, if a client needs to come in, they need to change a beneficiary or they need to make any minor 
updates that's not going to pay a commission, our, our office takes care of it. Yeah. And same with retention. As soon as somebody's two weeks behind on a payment, boom, they get a call from our office yep. asking them about the payment, trying to get the payment, seeing what's happening. If the payment's too high, if they need to adjust the premium, if it's too much, they'll adjust it into policy. So all that back end stuff is done from the agents and it just gives them the time to actually spend out there writing new business, which is what we want and what the agents want. Years. Again, you've seen a lot. You've done really well, made over 4 million bucks, got over nearly 2 million in renewals. What's some advice that you would give the people, maybe the agents that are struggling, right? Because we're in an industry where they say it's 92% first year failure rate. What's some advice that you would give to someone that's struggling or maybe that's someone that's looking to get in the industry and that's nervous because of that fact? The biggest thing, I think the biggest mistake that agents make is what I mentioned earlier is like trying to find the most efficient way to work or trying to find ways to save money. So if you're going out there right now and you're selling and you're only writing an app a day or maybe three to five apps a week and you're not selling enough, it gets into the agent's head that maybe they need to add a product or maybe if my commissions were a little bit higher or maybe if my leads were a little bit cheaper or if I can't sell this house, what if I could have sold them a Medicare? So that's the, the Medicare supplement. That's like the biggest thing that agents get is they get in their head and they stop focusing on making more sales. Yeah. So that's it. You need to refine your skills. The biggest mistake is you getting sold on the next big opportunity, right? It yeah. happens all the time. You see the fastest growing agency or they'll come out and say, oh, we have a 140% contract and you're getting paid 80%. Look at how much you'd make 50% more for every sale. And what the agents don't realize is that it, it's not like you get paid that on every app. Yeah. Right? Every life insurance company, all their products have different types of commissions. You have a different commission mm -hmm. schedule. So if they bank you on this opportunity that you can make 140% or 150% commissions on this one product. That you're going to sell, what, 5%, 10% of the time? Maybe or, Not you know, nothing. Yeah, 1% yeah. of the time. Yeah. Or the cheapest rate. They'll say, hey, come to us. Look at we have the cheapest rate. And then you look at it, and then they cut your commissions by 40% for that cheaper rate product. Yeah. Or we have a guaranteed issue, and then you look at it, oh, I get 20% on a guaranteed issue. Yeah. And then you have this one product that you can get paid 140 on that you never sell. You have this other product that you can sell to anybody because it's a guaranteed issue, but you're getting paid 40% on. Yeah. Sometimes you just refer them out, and you can get paid on it yeah so when an agent really gets looking to it and you look at your book of business they're like wow some sometimes i get paid 100 percent on this company i get paid 80 percent this company i get paid 120 but when you average it all out they're like wow i get paid an 80 percent commission on yeah. average for every policy and then with us that's what our agents start on usually but they make it on every sale yeah like it, at least we can calculate it and we know every single house that we walk into what we're selling and what we're going to get paid on that policy Right there. There's not a, there's not 50 different things that you got to memorize. And we have an agent, I won't say that, say the name, he's a friend of mine in the industry. And he, he used to work with us, moved to a different territory. And he said that the company he was working with, well, he was on 125% contract and he didn't factor in all those things. And, he's, and he goes, I was selling a lot. We're getting issued guaranteed issue. And so he's like, when I actually looked at the amount of business that I'm writing, and how much I'm getting paid, what I'm depositing, because at the end of the day, that's like the most important thing. Yeah, he's. I was making more money when I was on an 85 at Lincoln my first year, right? When yeah. I first started here, I was making more money on an 80 or an 85 percent contract. And so it's for us. The nice thing is we keep it so simple and the process so simple that anybody that's coachable and that is willing to come in and just be a sponge, put in the work, have a good attitude. You know, to me, this is the easiest thing I've ever sold. It's the easiest product. You know what I mean? Because yeah, there's a massive need for it. I yeah. mean, it, it's. They told me when I was really young, there's only two things in life that are certain, death and taxes. Yeah. And that's what we sell. We sell insurance to cover you when you die and everybody dies. It's the most stable market out of anything. Not everybody needs an annuity. Yeah. Not everybody you know, has a 401k that they can roll over. Not yeah. everybody can spend $3,000 a month on premium to get a few million dollars so they can pay taxes when they die, their inheritance tax for their kids. There's 1% of the population needs that. And again, that was a, the biggest motivating factor for me was I came in 2008, I lost everything. And yeah. I was able to year one, my first 12 months make 175 grand. I was able to go in by just sheer work ethic and being willing to be coached. And it was something that with the market we're in right now, it's going to drive our business up because it's going to push a lot of good people from other industries that just want an opportunity that want to want to build a legacy and build something for their family that doesn't matter what's going on in the market. And that's the great thing about this niche. Yeah. You know I mean? Not just in 2008, but if you look at the most 
recent crisis, COVID, yeah. you know, all kinds of people were shut down. A lot yeah. of people lost their jobs. A lot of people couldn't work. The government's handing out money left and right to try to keep you stable. Did you Are, make more money? <laughs> yeah, I certainly made more money. Every <laughs> single year that I've been in the business, I've made more money. Yeah. Maybe sometimes it's a lot, sometimes a little, but every single year that I've been with Lincoln Heritage and Gold Memorial, I've made more money. Right. And through the whole pandemic, none of my agents were out of work. This whole entire, not only were we not out of work, but it was booming. When yeah. things like that happen, especially something like the, the, virus that you can't mention starts knocking people off people want to buy insurance yep. life insurance was in high demand during that time yeah and, and it helped a lot of people out all the people that were affected by covid and had deaths in the family they had life if they had life insurance policies they paid out and it really helped the families out that's and it was millions of dollars i know one month i think they said it was like two or three million in claims or something and it seemed yeah just more COVID. yeah i didn't even we probably paid 200 and something million dollars in claims that's throughout nuts. covid that's yeah crazy. so it helped a lot that's the whole reason why people buy life insurance and when things like that happen and even with the recession so the thing about the recession is even when people that when their money was tight the way that we sell it and the way that the product is designed is it's something that's concrete right no expense you buy for your funeral yeah everybody knows that they're gonna have to have a funeral yep. when you buy other types of life insurance it's just oh this is for my family to have a few extra hundred thousand when i die yeah it's different it's something that you can let go you'd yeah. rather cancel that than your cable when, or stop buying cigarettes. So you'd rather buy yeah. cigarettes than keep that life insurance yeah. policy. But when we sell, the way that we sell it and as a complete package to cover all of your final expenses and the funeral needs, it becomes something that's concrete, something you can hold in your hand, something that you plan out. Yeah. So they're not going to cancel. That's the last thing they're going to cancel. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why our final expense persistency is higher than traditional life. Yeah. Me and Nate both live in a small town, J.R. Berrigan. It's 12,000 people, I think, not including the, the two Prison, ladies yeah. that are the two prisons. <laughs> And uh, we produce so many high producing agents and managers. And what would you uh, attribute that to? It's not really the area. It's not like we're in an area that's any different than, gosh, me and you. We've worked in Compton and Eaglewood. We've worked in Las Vegas. We've worked in New Mexico, Florida. Me and you have worked yeah. all kinds of places. Mm -hmm. There's no area that's better than the other. The reason why our agents are successful is because of, it's because of our system and because of our management team. That's basically what it comes down to is that all of our managers were salespeople. We don't just, we don't hire someone with a college degree and say, Hey, come in and manage it. Come from Kmart come over and you're going to manage this group of agents. No, we're all salespeople. Yep. And something that we pride ourselves on is knowing that each one of our managers, any, anybody that has a sub agent has gone out there and been in the trenches and still is, I still sell policies to this day. All my managers still do daily. Yeah. It's because we have managers that are willing to bring somebody on board and then we completely show them the system hands on. Yep. It's not a webinar. It's not here. Look at these videos. We have those too. Yeah. Obviously we send them that before we can schedule the field training, but it's because somebody comes out and takes you out. It happened when me and you worked together. When you became yeah. my manager, the first thing that we did is we got in the car, even though yeah. I had been in the business for years, yeah. me and you got in the car and we went and worked. Yeah. And I still do it to this day with my managers and with my agents. We go out in the field and we work together. There's no substitute for that. Cause again, at every every new agent is going to have some point, especially their first year or two, where they feel like quitting or giving up. They're going to run into a wall or maybe they don't sell for a couple of days. Maybe their car breaks down. Things are going to happen. And having a local manager or a manager that's willing to travel to you or put you on a plane to get you to them, yeah. that's going to take you out, split business with you, do whatever it takes. That level of commitment, it's shown in our numbers. Like right now, I think for the last contest, I think we had seven of the top 10 for GM. And I think it was the top three or top five that, that were part of our agency. Which yeah, is consistently for the last decade or so we have. Yeah, it, yeah, it just comes down to our commitment level to the agents. And it's to a, that compounds, right? Because you have all of these people that bring different levels of experience different from all different walks of life that constantly share with our team. They're, they're giving their knowledge. If you wanna learn how Howard's been number one, he, that, uh, he tells you exactly what he does. The biggest advantage, and a lot of people don't realize that too, is that the biggest advantage is this network of knowledge that we have. It's yeah. a vast pool of knowledge that we have. We have people that have been working with us for 30 years yeah. and they're great salespeople still selling to this day and selling a lot. The best salespeople, yeah. they know all the objections. We have one product. We know it very well, so we know exactly what anybody's going to say anytime before they're even going to say it. Yeah, that's why it looks like it's you have laydowns when you go when our managers take out people. They're just like, oh wow, this is the easiest business in the whole entire world. He sold eight policies today. I've heard that you know? so many times. Take out a new agent, and then they're like, 
take them out, spend some time training them for a couple of days. And then when they go out on their own, they're like, the leads are different. <laughs> Everybody just bought. And it's like, no, it's because I've taken the time to hone my craft. And, and it's, I know what to say, what not to say. And that's the cool thing is being able to be around other people, being able to pick up the phone. And like, for me, like a huge advantage, having your dad as my mentor, being able to work with you, other people, it's like, Hey, anytime if I've got a question or I don't know something, I know I can call Nate. You're like the encyclopedia when it comes to insurance. So anytime if it's like product related, company related, I know you're the guy that I can call. And it's like, you're going to have an answer. And same thing, like with your dad, that's such a huge advantage. And it, it allows you to really ramp up and speed up your, your success. That our, that's why our guys are some of the best salespeople. I, I'm confident that they can sell anything, but when you look, when you have 10 different products that you offer when you work with some of these IMOs and you get on their training calls, cause I have, no. and when you get on their training calls, it's mo mostly like this. Okay. If you're in a house and somebody has congestive heart failure, you're going to put them with this company. If they have diabetes, put them with this company. If they have diabetes and congestive heart failure, put them with this company. If it was before the age of 50, then with this company, hey. if it was after then with this company. So their whole training call is just how to place people and which company to use. Cause they have so many of them. Our sales calls are about sales, mm. teach you how to be a better salesperson. We're teaching you when the person says this, you say this, when they look like this, you're going to say this. We already know exactly what's going to come out and what the objection is and what our rebuttal is going to be. So we just do sales training. Our, all of our training is strictly sales training because you know what? We know who we're going to place them with. Yeah. We already know that everybody's yeah, going to get placed with this one product and everybody's going to qualify for. So all of our training is just about your, your personal trait, your personal statistics, your personal talents. And that's a big thing too, is like for agents to track, track your metrics and know exactly how many doors or how many phone calls you made, how many presentations you're doing, know what your conversion rate is. Because if you understand those numbers, it's easy to reverse engineer this how to be successful. You want to make a hundred grand. And that's something that I've always done. Like with any agent manager, we would lay that out for them and say, look, how much do you want to make? How much do you want to deposit in your account? Yeah. We don't need to talk about anything other than that. And then let's work the numbers backwards. And then at that point, it's up to you to put in the work. It's up to you. Obviously you, the agent's yeah. got to go out and do it. But you'll know with all the tracking that we have and you can see your lead conversion ratio. You know that if you take 10 leads, how many are you going to sell? Yeah. And then you know how much money you're going to have deposited after paying for those 10 leads and after making those three deals. And then it's just a matter of how many how many batches of 10 leads are you going to take? How mm -hmm. many can you work in a poss in, possibly in a month? And then eventually you'll get maxed out. And then that's when you go to the next opportunity, which is building an agent agency. So basically yeah. just duplicating yourself, your success. Yeah. And we never allow anyone to manage. Like our thing, your dad's always told me, an agent needs to be in a spot to where they can afford it. They need at least 2,500 to 3,500 minimum coming in per month. That's before they even get up and go out and go to work based on their as earned and their renewals. Because if they don't have that as managers, especially when you're first starting out, like my first few years, most of my income was off my own pen. It was me yeah. putting people in the car and it's like, Hey, you're struggling or you're, you're, you need to make some money. Let's get in the car. We're driving the Bakers. Oh, yeah. We're driving the Sacramento. It, you know, yeah. I, all my agents have the same slogan as production fixes everything. Uh, dude, that's, know, there's never a, been a truer statement. That's yeah, the truth. You know, things going on, you go out and work. That's just what my grandpa, this one time I was having a hard time, right? When I had first started and I didn't sell anything. And then my grandfather had called me up. And he, he had asked me what I was doing. And I was just like, oh, I don't have any leads. I wrote these two deals, but I don't get paid till next week. I'm waiting to, I'm waiting to, till I get paid. I'm going to get more leads. I'm going to go out and work. And two hours later, there's a knock at my door and I'm in my pajamas at noon <laughs> and he comes in, he's all dressed up and he's like, Hey, shine your shoes. That's what he used to say every time that we're going to go work. <laughs> and he, he, I got dressed and then we went out and we just, we knocked on doors. We literally walked down the block that I lived on and we just started knocking on every door and he just showed me what I had to do. There was no excuse. There's no, there's, there was never me telling my grandfather or my dad, like, Oh, I have to wait for this or, Oh, I got to do this. It was just like, anytime there's any problems. I I can never tell my grandfather that I couldn't afford something because he knew that you can just go out and make it. So he said, you know what, Nathan, never tell me that you can't afford something. Tell me that you're not willing to work hard enough to get it. And it really stuck with me. That's solid advice. That's solid yeah. advice. There was this, this time, you know, it really kickstarted my business was maybe in my first or second year. At the time, my grandfather had the IMO, right? Gold Memorial with Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And he was number one. And then my dad was an agency manager and he had the number one agency. They're doing like uh, 200,000 a month, right? less than I'm doing right now. Right? <laughs> and then my uncle, he was the number one agent for the company. 
And back then, Jack Lennon, the owner of Lincoln Heritage, used to call the agents and motivate them. And I remember this one time he called me up and he always called my name's Nathan, but he always called me Mason. He didn't even know my name, but he called me up and he's all, Mason, why is it that you come from a long list of winners and you're such a loser? <laughs> and that really, it really got me thinking. I'm like, damn, I really thought that I could come into this business and I was just going to shine, but I didn't realize the, the type of, the type of commitment that I would have to make, the daily commitment that I'd have to make. It's hard. I was 19 or 20 when I started. <clears throat> yeah. I, my bills were maybe 1500 a month, maybe. Yeah. You know? So you would go out and you make two or $3,000 and then I wouldn't want to work for the whole rest of the month. Yeah. You know, that's one of the a big trap that people fall into when they start their own business or when you're in charge of your own schedule yeah. is that when you make enough money, you want to take a vacation, Yeah, but you really can't, you have to be consistent in your sales. And that's another thing too, is right. I've seen a lot of people come in, have success. It's hard when you're young, right? Because that's, you go out and it's, if your bills are a thousand, 1500 bucks a month, it's like, I'm rich, right? I remember yeah. like making a couple thousand a month and it's my whole life. Yeah, I'm, your first 10,000 years. Yeah. Oh man, 10,000 a month, a hundred. It was always a big goal of mine to make a hundred thousand a year. Yeah. But that was a big thing. I just thought that if I could make a hundred thousand dollars a year, that all my problems would be solved. Yeah. You know, but, and it's, but it's a thing too, of budgeting it when you're self-employed, if you go out and let's say you make 10,000 one month. That doesn't mean you're going to make 10 grand the next month. No, and it's the biggest thing is budgeting your time. So you, your greatest resource that you have as a salesperson or as that owns their own business is your time. The, you did a good thing years ago when you sent it out to all of your managers and you had a list Wait, and it was like, shh, don't, we're going to, we're dropping a video on it. So don't, oh, are you? don't tell, yeah, don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> it's already coming up. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do a little, the, man, the time yeah, management. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're going to do it. It's been a while. Yeah. But that, that was a great thing. It shows you like, well, how are you going to waste time? How are you going to waste time mowing your lawn? I enjoy doing yard work. Right. Yeah. But if you're going to take two hours out of a Saturday or six hours to do things that you could pay somebody else to do for really cheap, like why wouldn't you just pay somebody to do it and then go out and sell a policy? Yeah. And make the money yourself. Yeah. So yeah, we're definitely, we're, it's in the works. We've already shot the video for it, but <laughs> we're going to do a Q and a on things that you can do to really maximize your income, right? Cause we're all given 24 hours. We don't have the same 24 hours in a day, but it's real important how you manage those 24 hours and being self-employed. Um, that's generally one of the biggest reasons that I've seen that people fail is yeah. just not staying consistent enough, right? Running this like you are punching a time clock, even though you're not, and then sacrificing that extra time, especially when you're new in the business to speed up your learning curve, right? Cause you're going to yeah. have a bad month. You're going to have a bad week. Yeah. And you want to do that. You want it to sacrifice. You don't want to sacrifice your time doing things like that because what I want to sacrifice time for is to go see my kid play football yeah. or go to my daughter's cheerleading thing in Las Vegas. So that's the things that you want to sacrifice your time for. If you are going to miss and not sell a policy, you're not going to miss it mowing your lawn. You'd rather use that to go. I've never m missed a kid function throughout my kid's whole entire life. My dad didn't come to my football games. Yeah. He said it in a meeting that one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but but I, I never have. It, it gave me the opportunity. This business has given me the opportunity to be able to to manage my time and to set my schedule how I like. And that's another thing for in for new agents and a really important pillar of being successful is having a good support system at home, whether it's your wife or your parents or whoever, right? Whenever you're starting this business, I've had so many times when I, I failed, right? When I was having a bad day, a bad week where I'd call my wife and I'm an hour and a half, two hours from home. And she'd be like, go to one more house. Go, yeah. don't just come home empty handed encouraging me because she knew that if I come home, I'm going to be bummed out. I just spent driving two, 300 miles yeah. a day and nothing. And it was so many times that sometimes I didn't sell when I, and again, it was never just one more house. It was maybe five more houses, 10 more houses. Well, like, if it's on the way, right. Yeah. <laughs> and, but it was something that a lot of times those were make or break for me because money was so tight. When I first started that one more house, I sold $2,000 or I made, went out and let's say I made five or $600. That was a game changer, right? That was my PG&E bill. That was my car payment. That's yeah. something that agents that will that just push themselves one more. There's a guy at Milet. He says one more, right? Milet, I think. Talking about one more, one more time, one more rep, one more day. And I think that's so important, right, for agents that if you're struggling, go to one more door, right? It's such a powerful statement that if you'll do that, it's it, it'll help change. And like a biggest one of the biggest things you can do is anytime you're struggling, is the only way you can change it is through action. So you have Correct. to go yeah. out and make something happen, right? Nobody's going to 
feel sorry for you. Nobody's going to come save you or rescue you. We're adults and we have to seize the opportunity that's given to us. And action is the best way to do that. Even day-to-day -day actions or when you're working your leads, I tell a lot of my guys, when you go to a door and you knock on it and nobody answers, what are you going to do? You're just going to get in your car and yeah. go to the next one? No, you knock on the neighbor's door. They used to call it the, the six pack. You're going to knock on the neighbor's door, this one, and then across the street. Yeah. You got to maximize your time for sure and be as efficient. Now, being that there's so many companies recruiting so crazy in this industry, right? Again, I, you and me, we both, I'm sure you, like, you, like you said earlier, we get so many people hitting us up every day, every week. There's from this company, that company, again, offering this, offering that. And if you're picking a company, pick someone that's going to be obviously a good fit for you. Someone that to me, I've always said, let me look at who's going to be mentoring me. And do I want, are they, have they achieved are what I would like to achieve, right? Have they accomplished those things? Because I know if they have, they're gonna be able to give me a leg up. And a lot of times there's these companies making all these huge promises. And like you said that, oh, they've been recruiting, they've been in the industry for a year, right? No, if you're picking a mentor, make sure that you vet them properly, make sure that they've actually delivered, that they've achieved the things that you wanna achieve, right? And that they can back it up with production, with income. I've always post my 1099s, right? I get a yeah. lot of hate on that because like from literally my first year, Numbers don't lie. You can talk whatever you want. Why this opportunity is so great. Yeah. Look at my 1099. It's not, you want yeah, to talk about contracts. But it's not just you too. It's the agents. Like we talked about earlier, that vast pool of knowledge that you have. Yeah. You want to be in contact with your agents too. All of our agents are really open. We have the number one agent in the company, Howard Geyer. And yeah, you can call him up right now and talk to him. Any of our guys can. All of our guys are so transparent that you can reach them out, reach out to them anytime. Yeah. And not only that, we've had people They've flown out, met with Howard, got in the car with him that, are, that aren't apart, don't even work in the same agency under the same manager. And he's been gracious enough to put them in the car. And we've had many other managers. Again, I know all of your managers, they consistently work with each other's agents to give them a different yeah. perspective. And just tell them, I mean, you can tell a lot by how an organization runs by actually talking to the agents. With all the agencies nowadays and the companies that are coming out, you always hear about these managers that are making millions of dollars. And yeah, you would expect to. If we've been in the business for 20 years, 10, 20 years, and of course we're going to be making millions of dollars. Yeah. What you want to hear about is about an agent that started this year. Yeah. Like you want to ask your manager, hey, who have you had, who can I talk to that just started. Yeah. I want to see how they're doing. So someone three to six months into it, maybe six months to a year, you want to know their input and hear it from them, not from some marketing guy that you talk to that makes a million dollars a year that lives 10 states away. Yeah. You want to actually talk to the agents. Your dad always told me that. He's like, when I first started recruiting, he said, there's going to be red flags and things that you run into. And he's one of the biggest red flags is you get someone that's been in the industry for 20 years and they're still looking for an opportunity. Yeah. It's not the opportunities that it's not the companies they've worked for. It's yeah, they're doing something wrong. Yeah. You can tell for sure. Like we mentioned earlier, you have agents that have been here for decades. I have an agent that you can call right now. That's been doing this for 35 years working part. You, that's another thing I used to hear a lot in this business that you don't ever retire. You just slow down or uh, die. Yeah. Or die. <laughs> you die in the business. Yeah. But there's plenty of agents that you, if you have a good book of business and you work for many years, it's hard to find motivation towards the latter years because you make so much money. Yep. There's some agents that retired with Gold <clears throat> Memorial that get paid $50,000 a month just for the renewals. Yeah. And when you get to that point, when your renewal account is 20, 30, 40, 50 grand, it's hard to find motivation to go out and continue to work. It's more just personal motivation and, and pride, to be honest with you. <laughs> that wasn't Muhammad Ali that said it's hard to get up and go, go running when you're sleeping in silk pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But we've had agents that that's something that a lot of people in the industry don't talk about is actual retirement. We have specific contracts that are set up for retirement. The way that we structure our renewals, we structure them in a way. So eventually you can stop working. My, my grandfather worked until the day he died and my father is still is going to do the same thing, but both of them wanted to retire at a point and tried to, yeah. they just got bored. That's how I remember the story your dad told me about your grandpa. He's he took six months and then came back and he's like, there's only so much you can, you only play golf so much. He's I already can buy and do so pretty have, much anything I have the I best want. yard on the block. That's what he used to say. <laughs> yeah, my yard looks nice. The yeah. best yard on the block. But yeah, he lasted six months and then he just got bored. It's hard too in this business because if you, if you do a well enough job and you're good to your clients, they'll continually call you. Mm -hmm. I still get people, I get calls. I went out and saw a client that I had that I wrote up 13 years ago and I went up and did a new policy for her. And oh, not a new one, but for, for her family members, yeah. I still get, I get probably three to 4,000 AP every month just from my existing relationships. So eventually in this business, that's the whole goal. People think that 
you need to go out and they want to make a million dollars their first year, but it's not like that. I made 60 to 80,000 my first year. And and this, and, yeah. And this year, a, a half a million. Yeah. So it just builds up. It's really like a snowball. It's a marathon, not a race. They always said that to me. It's a marathon, not a sprint. I've heard that all the time. I relay that mess that message to anybody that's in the industry is again, you're going to, it's those peaks and you're going to peaks and valleys and you have to be willing to have a big enough why to push through the low times and understand that, Hey, just because you're on top of the mountain doesn't mean that, Hey, something could happen tomorrow. You might lose an agent there's going to be yeah. things that happen. But I think one of the, the big reasons too, I would, I would bet money on is like your grandfather, your dad, myself. The reason this business is so fun is because we get to help other people achieve their dreams. We get to help other people. Someone comes in and says, Hey, I want to make 200 grand a year. We can lay out a plan. We can hold their hand and give them every, every necessary tool. If someone is willing to put in the time to understand that this is a get rich slow business and they're willing to commit and do the work, we can get them the seven figures, right? Yeah. It's not going to happen overnight, but how good does that feel? I remember your dad saying having an agent buy their first house or buy the, buy a car or come in and change their family's legacy. I'm, the biggest thing is generational wealth. We hear about this all the time. I mean, it, how unfair it is in the country where some people are just born as trust fund babies, right? Like they're just born into this world with world with wealth. And how do you think it happens? Worked hard. And that's what it is like these renewals that you get right in the life insurance business, they don't go away when you die. Yeah. My grandfather had $15 million in his renewal account. And when he died, it got passed down to his kids and his wife. They're still, my dad's still getting payments from his father's renewal accounts. And then my dad himself has a really large renewal base and that's what's going to happen. It's just going to pass down to me. I have a large renewal base. I got $2 million in my renewal account yeah. already. And then that's for my kids too. So you really can build generational wealth. You can set your family up for the next eight generations by the work that you do today. You know, what's, and what's crazy about that, right? Is that to get an insurance license, it's literally 32 hours of online class to get the life only. Most states is like three, 400 bucks. Yeah, a quick test. Yeah, it's, I've had people literally start the test on a Friday, pass it, or start the classes, pass the test on Monday. And within two or three weeks when their, their background and everything comes through, we've got them up and working. They're making money. Yeah, it, you don't really have to have any experience in the life insurance industry. And you just have to have drive. You have to have drive and some ambition to to achieve your goals. That's really all it takes it. I have agents that I had an agent that came that we used to work at Starbucks. I have one that came from Rite Aid. I have one that was a construction worker with a union. All these different people that you would never guess would come into sales. Sales is, it, it seems like such a risky business, right? Cause you're only getting paid when you sell, which is the hardest part. We negate that with our renewals because we continually to get paid from the previous policies that we sold. But where else, where else can you go with such a small investment? And even if you have no experience in sales, make fifty, sixty thousand dollars right? And you're not racking up hundreds of thousands of dollars in college yeah. debt. And it, again, no, uh, like we've got one, one of your managers came from farming, like you said, construction, yeah. all these different things. It doesn't matter what your walk of life is or what your experience level is. And to be honest, majority of the time, we prefer someone with no license because they don't have any bad habits. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter the experience you had or where you came from or the resources that you have. It's not like you have to come, it's not like it costs $500 to come over and work for us. We provide all the schooling, the training, everything that it takes. All you need is time. Yeah. That's all that I need from somebody to come and work for me and be successful is just time. Just give yeah. me your time. Which obviously, if you don't you either have two things, you have money or you have time. Yeah. So if you don't have the money, you can spend the money. If you have time, then hey, spend the time. A hundred percent, hundred percent. Tara's her shoe habit's too expensive for me to, yeah. <laughs> to have the time. Yeah. My, my wife's is a CrossFit and that's pretty expensive too. <laughs> With Lincoln, I talked to a lot of people and there's a lot of different ways to go in this business. There's no one perfect way to, to do it, to start in a life insurance business. It's hard not to want to add all these different products, but it comes down to a quality of life for me. I have a lot of friends in the business. I've been doing it for a long time. I have friends that came and worked with me, some that are brokers, and it just comes down to, like you said, the quality of life, the amount of time that you have to spend doing everything else, but working. And, and that's a, the thing here is that like, when you get this down again, your first year, two years is going to be like the hardest part of your career. I'd say, yeah, the first year for sure is hard until your renewals start to pick up and you start to get enough to cover your mortgage. You have to hump. You really have to hump. And, and I, I remember that that was a thing too, right? As I started building my agency, I remember your dad saying, Hey, once you get your agency to where you're writing a hundred thousand a month, 
right? And you do that consistently for a year. If you get to where you're writing 200,000 a month, you're doing that consistently for a year, you're going to see these big jumps. And like a lot of times your monthly renewals and as earns may not go up that much. It's going to fluctuate, but watching it jump over time. And, and that's just a huge safety net because like for me, when I first started as an agent, I was like, man, I lost, I was in the process of losing everything. I lost a couple houses. Um, Thankfully, I had a, a guy that had done a hard money loan for us when we were doing real estate for an investment property. And we were blessed that he worked with us and he lowered our payment. I think it was like, it was over 3000, like maybe 3,500, whatever. And it, cause it was supposed to be short term. He ended up lowering it to 1500 bucks. And I remember when I was an agent, that was like my first goal was like, how do I get my pay through yeah. right on my as earn check up to 1500 bucks? Because then I know that pressure's gone. I know that before I get up and go to work, 1500 bucks is getting deposited the first of every month or the first of the fifth. And my house payment is taken care of. It, it helps your sales. You've heard that term commission breath. It's hard to go out there and sell when you need the money so badly because you push too hard. You say things that you normally should have and you don't really act on the on your client's best interest. So yeah, it says a big thing. Once you can build a little bit of base and you get money coming in, then it's oh, okay. Now I know what I need to do. I just get, need to keep doing what I'm doing and everything will be fine. So how much is your pay through right now? How much you get a month at, on average? Uh, it's close to 30,000. So yeah. before he gets up and goes to work, $30,000 a month deposit into his account. That's life-changing money for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. There, there's this saying here in town, well, what I told my wife, when I first started my bills, I only had $1,500 a month out that I needed. Yeah. That would cover everything. My car was at a little beater that was all paid off. My rent, back then rent used to be $500 a month, not yeah. 1500 a month, 1700 a month. For us, like it was the same thing, right? Like at the end of my first year, it obviously takes time, but I think I was at, I was like 34, 3,500 and pay through at the end of my first year and to watch that grow and compound over time. It's something that it's rewarding because that a lot of jobs you can go in and you can work and you can work overtime and yeah, you might get paid a little bit extra per hour, things like that. But what's cool about what we do is if you put the extra effort into getting, becoming a better salesperson, right? Becoming a better business person, that extra hard work is going to, you're going to get compensated for it in a big way and it's and, and it shows in your paycheck yeah it's every single policy that you're selling it's like putting a little bit into a savings account into a retirement account yep. uh, our renewal accounts are basically like ira accounts we can start where we're drawing off of them already but you keep building it they go up every single year and eventually hopefully one day me and you will stop working yep. and then we would still have income the whole time not only that like i said it's generational income yeah. there's no way that we're going to spend the amount of money that's in our renewal accounts before we die if we work long enough, so then it just goes down to our children and then their children and then their children. And if you bring them in the business and you can bring your friends and family in the business and it just, like I said, it builds generational wealth. And that's something that, okay, a thing that I talk with like your dad about before is there's a lot of different models of the way that you can run your agency and what you can do with it, that kind of stuff. I see people that they sell their business and it's something that your dad's always discouraged against. Right. And selling your business is basically as a life insurance agent is like selling your renewals. So if your renewals are paying out $5,000 a month, they'll look at your renewals and be like, oh, we figure that your clients will live this long and it'll probably pay out this much and they buy your book of business. So some of these agencies will come, will recruit you, sell you on the opportunity and they'll say, hey, why are you over there building a business for your upline? Oh, they're making all the money and you're just an agent, come over here and you can really build a business. And then you go over to that agency and a year into it, they're like, hey, we'll buy your business from you. And yeah. then you sell it for a lump sum. And then who did you build the business for? You yeah. really built it for your upline then because you sold it to them. And it's something that as if you're buying that business, I bet it. it's great. Oh, I'll buy renewals all day. If anybody wants to sell their renewals, I'll buy them. Any of you, <laughs> we'll work it. it out. We'll work it out. We'll yeah. work it out. Show me what your renewals are and then I'll buy them from you. No problem. Yeah. It's never again. If you're when your dad told me about it, he's because I know that there's companies that have approached him and he's like, if I was going to retire and if I was 75 years old and I didn't have any children or a spouse or anybody, he's like, this is something, why would I give up all my hard work and what we built from my kids, from my great, my great grandkids that we could pass down? The foundation's already been laid. Why would you do that? Why would you sell it for pennies on the dollar? No, it's nuts. Even for full value, why would you sell it? You yeah. know, you would sell it right then. You go into business for five years and then sell it. Why wouldn't you want to pass it down to your kids and let them enjoy the well too, or bring them into the business too, so they can continue the trend. And you can, like I said, you can build generational wealth. You don't want to just get rid of it after one year. Yeah. 
and a lot of agents, a thing that we see that's pretty consistent in final expense and in life insurance in general is agents bounce around from company to company. And it's, yeah, you know, everybody's looking for the next best thing. Like we talked about earlier, when you're not making the type of money that you think you, that you think you deserve, or you think you need to make, you start looking to cut corners, right? So you're thinking, maybe if I was spending a little bit less on leads, maybe if my contract was a little bit higher, or if I didn't sell this house, if I can add another product, that's what it all boils down to. Yeah. And it's something that it doesn't, a lot of people, again, they're looking for that shortcut. The reality is there's no shortcuts. And the cool no. thing is there's so much information on insurance out there and how to be successful. Again, there's 10 different ways you can do it. And there's all kinds of products and different things. Someone told me a long time ago, like when I first started, they said, find one thing that you enjoy and that a niche that you can get behind and feel good about. And for me, it was like the people I'm sitting with, I'm looking at it like, hey, this is my grandma. It's, it could possibly mean me one day, you know, <laughs> consider all these things. So every person I sat with, I said, I'm going to, I want to do the best thing for that client. But a lot of agents, they get in and their main motivation is just the money instead of yeah. doing the right thing. If you do the right thing, the money will always be there. If you treat the people like it's your own parents, your own grandparents, the money will come, but thinking that there's a shortcut, right? Oh, I'm just going to go do this. There's a lot of factors and a lot of people think contract or this or that is always the main factor. And the reality is that they go from this company to that company. It's something that's been happening since the beginning of the insurance yeah. business. It's not anything new. Yeah. It's been going on since before I did. My grandfather used to talk about it. There's there, it, you sign up for one company and you write 10 clients up, right? And then it's so much easier to just sign up with a different company and sell their product to the same 10 people and cancel the other product. That's what it is. It's churning business, yeah. flopping business. And it's never at the best interest of your client. Even if the premium's cheaper, it's not if you're trying to start the contestability period over. It's never good for the client to churn business. And But it's something that it's crazy to me on how rampant it is nowadays. Because, like I said, it's been around for so long. They've been doing it literally for 80 years. Maybe oh, we're in two, 2020, so probably 120 years they've been doing it now. So, yeah, it's a story that's the oldest in time. What's been your biggest runoff? Because that's another thing, right? Is what you're a manager and a lot of people don't talk about. You're going to have debt, lead debt, chargebacks, things that advance that, that rolls up. What's been your big? What's been your biggest debt that that an agent or maybe agents have hit you with? You think maybe fifty or sixty thousand? Yeah, yeah. And for me, I had one agent that cost me. I think it was like ended up being like ninety two thousand or ninety six thousand. Yeah, and that's money because he went back, like you said, he got advanced commission. So it, he, it's never at the best interest of the agent either. The agent still owes the money. Uh, obviously, we as a your upline always collateralizes your debt. Yeah. So when something happens to an agent, the manager will cover it. They take it out of your check. But it's still money that you owe. It's still money that the agent owes. But it speaks to me though, too, that Lincoln, the difference, because I've had other agents that work with other companies that they've had to pay it in full with certain companies. Lincoln, yeah. I'm was newly in the business my first couple of years as a manager, and I had a good pay through, probably five, six thousand a month. They worked out a deal with me where it wasn't like, or maybe I was I, at that time I might have been making maybe 10, 15 grand a month, something like that. But they said, Hey, what can you afford? What can you work out? And they worked out, I think it was like five thousand a month until it was paid off. They didn't say, Hey, Adam. You, you got to write, right you write me a check for 90000 because I would have been out of business. Yeah, and they'll cancel your contract. They'll tell you you have 30 days. There's some companies out there that if you don't pay your chargebacks in 30 days, you, yeah. they cut your contract. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anybody that's getting into management, building an agency, or that's going down that route, you definitely want to know the risks of doing that and be careful. Have a mentor that knows the red flags because a lot of those things that you can... There, catch them before you, it costs you that much money. There, there's been dozens of agencies that came and gone because of that. So an agency will come up and they'll offer these really high contracts, no household max. I mean, it's a thing that a lot of people don't talk about the household max, like these restrictions that you have for your commissions, your commission level, your household max level, your repay level, all that intertwines to, to make sure that it limits the liability of your managers and the companies because it can put them out of business. Yeah. Like you said, you can have an agent that costs you $50,000 yep. just in one day. So what happens is these agencies come out and they're like, oh, we're not going to do a household max. So you have some guy that writes up his sister with a different last name and for a $500 a month premium and gets in a $6,000 advance. And then the next month, 
it cancels. And then he's on the hook for six grand. He's not going to get paid with that company. It's even worse when you have multiple companies. Yeah. You know, if you had 10 companies and this one company, you have a $6,000 chargeback, you get to write any business with them? No, because they have to pay the chargeback back. Yeah. So they just, these agents and agencies literally put companies out of business and agents like that put agencies out of business. If an agency comes out there and they said, oh, there's no household max, day one vesting, all these things, it ends up putting them out of business. The reason why we do things the way that we do is for stability. Yeah. It's so we can all stay in business longer and it's be to minimize our risks so we don't get put out of business. Yeah. And that's something that if you're looking at companies and they a huge red flag, if you're like, hey, you're looking for another opportunity, the moment they ask you to start flipping business, business that you've written or selling your friends and family, those are like two big things, the right? Big, yeah. Biggest red flags. Yeah. It's that, and it's, you can't do it. It's turning business. You're not supposed to do it. Yeah. The IMOs don't care or the upline when the types of people in, in, in that business model, they don't care. Yeah. They just want your business. And then they don't care if you succeed or fail. They already have all your clients. When you leave your clients are my clients. And I've seen yeah. some of them go back and rewrite some of those, like with a yeah. different company, roll that business as well. There, there's an agency out there that will, they have multiple products and they have this one company that they use that'll pay them a bonus and they have higher rates. So what they'll do is they'll push their newer agents to write that company with the higher rates and the bonuses so they can get the bonus. And then when that agent fails, they just go and rewrite it with a different carrier. So they get paid double commissions on the same client. Ouch. It's, it, but like I said, nothing, none of this is new. It's yeah. been around for a hundred years. Agencies and companies have been doing it. It just blows my mind that they consistently continue to do it. And they it's because they find new victims. Yeah. They find younger people that are trying to come into this business. They hear about all the money you can make, and then they just end up getting taken advantage of. They're the client. They're the consumer to these IMOs. They're not out there to write business and to sell life insurance policies to customers. They're out there to recruit you and to make money off of you. That's how some of them charge for their training. They'd be like, oh yeah, $500 for your training. If you have to pay to, to get trained or if you ever have to pay to get a job in your entire life, it's not legit. Yeah. You never have to pay to get a job. When you get a job, they pay you. You don't pay them. That's yep. just how it works ever. And his, it, 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 throughout all history, you're never gonna have to pay your employer. Yeah, yeah. That's not how it works. And if you guys do change companies, you do change the opportunities. Remember guys, this, even though it's, there's a lot of companies out there, this is a small industry. Your reputation matters, not only to the client, but the companies doing the right thing is a, a huge thing in this industry. Yeah. Professionalism. When it comes down to it, you have to be a professional. It's just the only way to conduct business. And it's again, if it doesn't work out, right? Like at JR, the way he's taught me when I first became a manager was if someone wants to leave, he's encouraged them to, right? If you yeah. think that's a better opportunity, go check it out. I can tell you like for what we do or anywhere, the grass is going to be greener wherever you water it, right? Wherever you put sure. in the time and the commitment. Wherever it is fertilized with the <laughs> shit. <laughs> but at the end of the day, don't, don't be a jerk. Don't be about it. Like it's where you go, it may not work out. And I see it literally. I got, I got a message today. I can't, you're not coming back. You know what I mean? Like it's, I, and I brought, we've had agents leave and come back that didn't flip business, that did the right thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it, it's your professional integrity. You can never give up your integrity no matter what. Yeah. And that's all you, that's all you have as a man or as a professional, all you have is your word. It's like the old saying, my word is my bond. You yeah. know, that's, it, it's just how it has to work. Another thing, reading your contract, anytime you're getting contracted with, with a company, there's a lot of things and a lot of people that, especially new people that come in the industry, even most agents, right? I can tell you when I started with Lincoln Heritage, you get the big contract. You're not going to, most people aren't going to read through every single word. And even if you do, it you might not understand it. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have known when I was 24, 25 years old, probably what half the stuff in there was. A big thing in ours is that there's a company out there that they put a 90 day repayment clause. And what that means is that when we sell a policy, so if I sell a policy as a new agent for 50 bucks a month, the company is going to advance me nine months of that, of that first year's commission. So they're going to give me, was it like 300 yeah, or something? Front. They're going to front you the money. They're going to front you that money, right? Depending on whatever, whatever your commission level is. As the clients continue start to make their payments, it's repaying that advanced debt. So you have advanced debt, you have lapses. You're going to have people that die and cancel. Yeah, and then um, And yeah, it's for and your chargebacks. Leads. And then you're going to have leads. And so what ends up happening is, is if, if you go with a company, their repayment clause, Lincoln's is 12 months. They understand most agents are going to, it's going to vary generally that I've seen like five to seven months, typically for a, a accounts payoff. If you're a manager and you're financing leads and different things, it could be longer. It could be closer to that year mark. A 90 day clause means that if you don't repay that debt, so like it, it, what it would mean to me, if I left right now, 
I'd probably have to come up with six or 700,000. So I'd have to write Lincoln Heritage a check within 90 days, or I lose all of my, re my renewals, all my retirement. Yeah. And what happens is most new agents, so they're like, oh, I get day one vesting, but they don't understand because of that clause, if you, you might write a bunch of business, leave in six months and might owe 20, 30 grand. Yeah. And so now again, just be careful. You yeah, know there, I mean? there's some companies that have 30 days. Yeah. There's some companies that, e even if you're still active, an active agent, if you have a chargeback, there's some companies that say you have to pay that chargeback within 30 days or else you forfeit your, con not just your contract, but they, your renewals they, too. They terminate you and yeah. Yeah, and you forfeit your renewals. It, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So at the end yeah. of the day, to my suggestion to any of you guys is find someone that's seasoned, someone you'd like to work with. Because again, when you're new, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time. You're gonna be on the phone with them a lot. You're gonna be working with them in the car a lot. So find someone that you mesh well with, someone with a proven tra track history, and that, you know, someone that's gonna help you achieve your goals, right? That's gonna give you all the necessary tools because it's gonna be hard. You're gonna, you're yeah. gonna, you're no matter if, you know, there's no perfect company out there, you're gonna have times that you wanna quit and you want that support system to help ensure your success. Yeah, it's a simple business, but it's not easy. You yeah. know, it's simple, but it's not easy. It takes a lot of footwork. It's a grind, man. It's yeah. a grind. And it's, you gotta have a positive attitude because you're gonna get beat up out there. And you have to enjoy it. That's the biggest thing. Everybody wants to make money, but what you really have to understand is that you have to enjoy what you do. I generally enjoy it. I like sitting down with our type of market. I like sitting down with middle and low income clients talking about a 10 or $15,000 policy. I really enjoy that. What I don't wanna do is sit down with a doctor and a lawyer and talk about a $4 million policy because anybody that makes that much money is smarter than me, or at least they think they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just my, it's just this market. If you're the type of person that's down to earth and you like normal people, right? Like we're talking 90% of the population, the people that don't make hundreds of the, not the top 1%, right? Yeah. We work with the 99 other percent and you have to enjoy it. You have to be able to sit into people's houses. It might not be the nicest place. It might be a little apartment. It might be someone on social security. It might smell like cigarette smoke, but you have to really enjoy what you do. That's the biggest thing, no matter what you do in life. Life, you you should have to enjoy it. You really should. 100%, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming out. It was awesome. We'll definitely, we'll be, I'll be reaching out to you to set up a Q&A. So anybody that heard anything, or hopefully you guys got some tips for anybody that's in sales or insurance, reach out to us. We'll put the details down below so you can contact Nate or myself, along with, I'll put his YouTube, our YouTube channel in there as well. Again, we're going to continue putting out lots and lots of content, bringing you the top in our industry. So this is really going to be more industry specific and designed to help people, no matter which company you work for, we're here for you. Yeah. So. Any questions, just put them in the comments and we'll get to them and address it. We should be doing these more often. Yeah. And if you want to sell your renewals, hit them up. Yeah. I'll buy them right now. <laughs> Anybody. All right. All right, Nate. Thanks, man. Till next time.